I'd like to welcome you to the Origins of Life initiative. How did you choose to come here? First, thank you very much for having me here. I'm really glad this opportunity. Uh, I started my uh, interest in meteorites since, like, un uh, since my undergrad years. I was like doing a geology major for my undergrad, and one of my professor just uh, in, uh, said something about meteorite research, and I was really interested. Uh, after the class, I want to talk with her. She told me, "Oh, if you want to, uh, do you want to look at a, me a real meteorite? Come to my office." And then I went to her office. She showed me all variety of meteorite. I was so fascinated by touching. Uh, one piece of rock from from the star from the asteroid. So since then, uh, I started my research on meteorite. That's where everything started. Kun, you're working on the origin of the moon problem. Yes. So what's the relevance to the Origins of Life initiative of understanding the origin of the moon? The formation of the origin of solar system and the Earth is the basic question we have to answer before we answer. Where's the origin of life? What's the favored origin of the moon? There are many <laughs> origins that have been suggested, but... Currently, the most popular, the well-accepted ones, is giant impact theories. The idea of giant impact is there's a smaller planet bodies hit the Earth, and part of this uh, smaller planet planetary bodies and the Earth mixed together form a new Earth and a new Moon. So the Moon is part of the debris of this giant impact. So this is the most common one, as the most popular one. So then how is this relevant to the formation of Earth-like planets? We think this is like a pretty common way for many uh, planetary bodies in the solar system formed by this way. Probably not just our solar system, but yeah, other solar yeah, systems. Also, yes. That the final building stages occur by these giant impacts. Yeah, by yeah. People did a lot of uh, computer simulation. So they, they, they simulated this impact, and there's like a Mars-sized planet, and they hit the Earth. And a majority of the sample, uh, like 70% or 80% of the uh, material of the moon currently are from the impactor rather from the Earth. But precise geochemical measurement done in the past 10 years can precisely measure the isotopic composition. And we find out, surprisingly, moon and Earth are the same. So if the majority of the material of the moon are from the impactor rather from the Earth, it's very unlikely the other, the impactor, have identical isotopic composition with the Earth. The Mars is different from the Earth. The, a, a lot of asteroids are different from the Earth. How could you, you have a, a impactor exactly the similar composition with the Earth? So this is kind of a problem. Why the Moon have the exactly same isotopic composition w with our Earth if the Moon are formed from this impactor rather from the Earth. I think one of the isotopes you worked on is iron isotopes. And yeah, it's an interesting story. Many isotopic systems uh, for the Earth and Moon, they are similar. And they are, they are same, but they are different from other uh, meteorite, other planets. But for iron isotope, which is my PhD project, w which I uh, am specialized on, iron isotopes of the Moon are different from the Earth. That's very unique compared to other isotopic systems. You, you've just finished some recent iron isotope work yeah, here yeah. now. There's a few very unique critical samples has not been measured before for iron isotopes. There's one uh, lunar downite. Uh, it's very old downite. The age of this downite is 4.5 billion years. It's almost identical to the age of the moon uh, within ultra bar. So we recently uh, measured the iron isotope, isotopic composition of this downlight. We find out this iron isotope composition of this downlight are very different from any other lunar samples has been previously measured. So uh, we think this uh, really, really old downlight represent a very early uh, differentiation event on the moon. So you also briefly mentioned potassium isotopes. A, a part of my project right now is to redo potassium isotope um, measurement with a much better precision, much better analytical uncertainties. We, we, we were trying to find out if we can push 
the analytical uh, abilities, if we can measure things more precisely, whether we can see the sm small difference between different plant values or not. In the past 10 years, the instrument of geochemical measurement has improved so much dramatically. So that's a part of my project to try to improve the analytical uh, technique to measure potassium isotopes in a better way and to see whether the potassium isotope of, of the moon will support giant impact theory or not. Uh, could, what do you do outside your work? I like traveling. I like to uh, read books. Uh, for example, I like to uh, I like the history of America. I'm very interested in like a civil war history. So I like go to travel to all these interesting places to uh, learn histories, learn about uh, it, the the culture in the past. So uh, traveling is one of my uh, hobby. I do the most outside my work.